to the Leadership Heart Podcast with Sandra J. Horton, the Growth Catalyst. Well, hello, everyone. Happy July 4th, the 4th of July for all my beautiful U.S. friends and colleagues and just what a great day. And I'm Sandra Horton. I am known as the Success Change Catalyst. And you heard the Growth Catalyst. That That's all me. And that's just part of my wonderful introduction. And I'm excited to be here today because I get the greatest opportunity to really share with someone who has been doing some amazing change in her own amazing world. And a none other than Marshall Williams, I'm going to bring up our beautiful friend, welcome you to the stage. Welcome, Marshall. Thank you for coming. Whoa, puffed his hair down. <laughs> the, I love the hair. I was just saying earlier that this is a beautiful opportunity and, and we get to show up in our best versions of ourselves and just yeah. be authentically who we are. One of the things that I really appreciate, and I'm just going to read a little bit about Marshall because... This woman has done a lot, and I, I always want to honor that space. Marcel Latonia, I'm going to say this, Latonia, is that how you say it? Latonia, Latonia. Latonia Williams yeah. is a credit expert. He was born and raised in Trenton, New Jersey, and currently resides in South Carolina. And it's not all about the present, but also about the future. With a deep passion for helping individuals and professionals secure business funding and home ownership. Marshall has significantly impacted the credit industry. In 2023, she cleaned multiple credit profiles, enabling her clients to secure over 3 million, 3 million in combined loan approvals. I say it is a true testament to her expertise and dedication. And she is known for her hands-on approach and importantly, Marshall remembers clients' names and birthdays and those important life milestones. I think that's really, really important. The genuine care for their lives matters beyond just credit. She partners with well, I can talk prestigious brokers and mentors and new credit repair companies. She offers her credit cleaning and coaching expertise. Her future goal is a call center. I love that that supports brokers daily and provides back-end support and customer service for other credit companies. She is a beacon of hope in the industry, is fostering a family-like atmosphere where clients receive results and education and resources. And importantly, she enjoys reading business and marketing books and cooking in her spare time. So we'll have to dive into that cooking. I'm sure there's something in that stove that would be really good. Yeah. And, and I wanna welcome those who are coming in live. Thank you for joining us today on the 4th of July. So yeah. Arshel, thank you for being here and, yes, and, and coming on to this beautiful platform with us today and to celebrate. And so I have a few questions as I love to kind of dive in. This is a little bit of a conversation between both of us. Sure. And, you know, everyone has a journey. Yeah. Everyone has a journey with money. Yes. Everyone has a relationship with money. Yes. Some good, some really ugly, and some excellent. So this dive into a little bit about your story in terms of, you know, you are this amazing woman, predominantly a male dominated space so how did you get to this place okay well actually it's so interesting um as you know well because you know me well I'm actually very detailed specific and I started off literally I met this gentleman I was at a webinar and he it was a webinar about credit and he was teaching great job but I saw him fumbling through papers so I was just like oh my gosh surely he's not organized but he has great information so I reached out to him after the webinar and was like Hello, you need me. Let me come help you. <laughs> Let me come help you get organized. Yeah. And it took him some time, but he eventually said yes. And I did. I started off as his assistant and quickly I had to learn the credit space because he was getting so he was getting booked. He was here, he was there everywhere. So I started attending his seminars, communicating with his clients and stuff. And it just grew from there. And I quickly turned into a salesperson for him. And it's just the rest has been history. And I just I love it. It's not even so much that, oh, I love credit so much. 
What I truly love is being able to get people the results that they came to me for. Oh, and I see. And I love that. And what I yeah. appreciating that story of who you are, Yeah, that you took number one is you took yourself and put yourself in a place to learn, to yeah. then be mentored, to, to excel and to grow. And that takes a lot of courage, yeah. you know, for a woman in that space, <laughs> um, that's a pretty powerful thing to, to take, you know, your womanness and to stand up and be strong and to, to say, Hey, I I've got a voice here and I'm learning this, but I can maybe perhaps do this differently. Yes. And that's kind of what you've done. So how have you really taken that leadership and, and kind of formed it because you're very successful and yeah. maybe women who are out there are looking to you to say, how did you do this in, in this kind of industry? I didn't try to be masculine. I just stayed who I am and stayed in my feminine. And I offered more. Sometimes people just always say I'm a mama bear because I'm always so caring. But I just made sure that I add a personal approach, you know, even because as we'll get down to the interview that I do, I do a lot of back end work and write letters for other credit repair companies. And what we always do is we make sure that we track and remember everyone's birthday. So even we can let other credit repair companies know like, hey, today is just Janine's birthday. So make sure you reach out to her and say happy birthday. So it's little touches like that. That is also not saying that men can't do that, but that's just usually something that women are cognizant of. And that's just what does it. So we just make sure that we create a family environment and create a family approach. I don't take myself too serious as a person, but I do take the results serious and I do take. Oh, I love that. (laughs) <laughs> you know, that that is so powerful because, you know, in life, and in, in there's so much richness in life when we're in our work, right? We're working in our business, we're doing our things, we're, we're connecting, but mm-hmm. there are times that we absolutely have to kind of pull back and just observe yes. and see what we're doing. And, and you know, you, you, kind of, you really touched my heart because I feel that in credit for many people yeah. that credit isn't easy. And now uh, even me saying that, yeah. some will say, oh, no, Sand, it, that, that credit's easy. I've always been good at credit. Yeah. So it comes from our bias. It comes from our experiences. So yeah. what is it? Like, how, what do you do to help people activate the success? Like, h- how do you start to work with them? Because you are a not only a mindset coach in this. Yeah. So if you had some suggestions, like a, a quick trailer of what someone should think about or look at when they're maybe having this moment of, oh, credit, <laughs> I can't do what I need to yeah. do. What would you suggest? What would you say to them? This sounds cliche, but I definitely think that you should find a professional. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of times what we think is the total opposite. And I believe that's on purpose. You know, I'm in the U.S., so, you know, I'm sure you have some U.S. listeners and stuff. But a lot of times what we learn in school is how to be a consumer. We learn that, oh, if you make a late payment, just double pay it next month and they'll forget about it. No, making a late payment is equivalent to getting shot and then somebody standing over you and stabbing you with the the bullet still in your body. It's very deadly. So it's things that are just so simplistic, but having someone who understands it or been in the space that wants to provide you with the information, sometimes that's the best. Now, I'm not saying that you have to trust everybody to clean your credit up, but I do recommend having a conversation or a consultation saying, hey, here's my credit profile. What I think it means to me is this. But is there anything that you see that we can improve, enhance or get off? Sometimes it's the simplest things as comments. People don't realize that certain comments can be deadly. For my U.S. people who've been through Hurricane Katrina or been through storms, sometimes they'll say, oh, I was late because I went through a natural disaster or I went through this. That's a key phrase to say, do not lend that person money because if a natural disaster happens, they're going to try to not pay or they're going to be delayed. So that person will either get denied or that person will either get a higher interest rate. So God forbid, if a natural disaster happens, they've collected their payment, probably three payments from you prior because your interest is so high. Wow. Okay. So that, that was a, a golden cool. nugget. Poof. <laughs> that was a golden <laughs> nugget. I hope everyone who's listening now or on in the podcast later can like take that. If you're in the U S that that's gold Yeah. because the natural inclination, because I don't know, here in Canada, there isn't a lot of conversations about credit. 
Yeah. But uh, but I'm going back to what you were saying about the consumerization, like the commercialization and just like buy, 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 yes. put it on your credit. Don't worry about it. Yeah. It's all going to be fine. It's not going to be fine. And so we have to really kind of lean in and break habits, yes. right? We have to break some habits yeah. of what we do. So what are some of the bad habits that people really should stop doing? <laughs> to help improve themselves. I definitely think that people do spend above their means. And I'm not judging because, I mean, you have to buy what's important for you. I always mm -hmm. tell people, i rather you max your card out for an investment or something that makes sense versus maxing your card out for an event that you may not even get any joy and stuff out of the event. Mm -hmm. So it's just using wisdom. You know, it's using yep. wisdom. But most common mistakes people do make outside of that is just putting everything on your credit card. But more importantly, not paying the balance off at the end of the month because mm -hmm. people do complain about interest. But the reality is, even if you had a card that had 50% interest, if you're paying it at the end of the month, you're not eating the interest because you paid the card down at the end of the month. And that's where it comes to mindset and discipline. And some people are at that place where they cannot do that right now based on their financial circumstances. And again, I'm not judging, but I would definitely love to be able to support people with making that happen. Even if that's a hate the word side job or side stuff that will require you to do some additional work to be able to gain some extra money. But seriously, paying those things down are totally going to help you in the long run, because no matter what credit card, what bank, their interest is collecting your interest. Yeah, you do a great job at it. <laughs> I, I have my hands up. Yeah, it, it's true though, and and it's, it's really interesting. I was just going to reflect on my story with my youngest adult daughter, and mm -hmm. you know, starting her business and stuff, and and all the banks are like, "Here you go, have a credit card, have this, have that," you know, and without any prudence of training these young entrepreneurs, as an example, you know, she started a salon, but she's done so well and got it together and really is, is managed that. I think there needs to be better communication, better training, better education, whether it's in Canada or the U.S., around fiscal responsibility. I think so. And I take responsibility and yeah. it's really easy to overpromise and not deliver. So I think it takes a, a effort. But if we think that the banks are going to say, hey, let me help you and let me help you help us make less money, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. It truly takes people like me or other people who want to go and learn and be able to say, hey, look, I have relationships with banks. I know what they're looking for. I'm not judging you. I think that sometimes credit is equivalent to weight. No matter how slim we are, nobody wants to get in the middle of the floor and get on the scale in front of a whole bunch of people and let them make a decision on what we should eat. And I think that finances are very similar. People are really shy or hesitant to be able to get on that scale or get on that credit worthiness scale to see what it's going to read back to them. And I think that that's at our detriment because you can't change your weight if you don't know what it is and you can't change your credit outcome if you don't know what it is. And sometimes it's things so simple because uh, ironically, people who have better credit tend to be so scared. And it's the people with the worst credit I've ever seen in my life that are so ambitious and they want a yacht and a boat and some breast implants and new earrings. <laughs> so I'm just They're like, wanting everything. They want that <laughs> lifestyle. But, but that's, that's, that's really, you know, like that's not being, it's easier. And I'm, yeah. that's a bias. I'm going to say that's a bias. It's easier to be caught up into the, that world than it is to be perhaps you know, more practical. And and it's interesting when I even talk about credit, it's like, what are the words that come to my mind, mm -hmm. which is um, either conservatism or, and it depends on how you're raised too. And, and this is interesting because so many people will lose hope. And this, this think about, you know, that you have so many different types of clients. I was, mm -hmm. I was looking at your wonderful, the work that you do, and you have so many different types of, from real estate. Why don't you share, like, how have you helped people Oh, sure. lost hope. Sure. In maybe those maybe two or three different areas that you do serve. Like what how do you help someone who's kind of lost hope? And maybe they've been this person and they've, you know, wanted to live large. They wanted to 10x their their income and they've spread themselves so thin that they've realized, hey, guess what? My really reality right now is I've spent all this, I've racked up my credit, and I have nothing in return. I have no revenue coming in. Now what? Okay. 
So this is a double fold. Now I want to be so transparent that anybody who can hear my voice, I'm not judging what you want. People may want credit for, like I said, breast implants and somebody may want it for a business. So whatever you want it for, my only interest or goal is to make sure that you understand the ramifications, the payback, and you're able to meet those payments. So if you wanted a million dollars just to have puppies and have them in your backyard and you wanted to use credit <laughs> to do that, by all means, do what you need to do for yourself. Who am I yeah. to stand in your way from that? But if it's at a place to where you're over leveraged, then we're just going to pretty much have a true conversation about how do we get you unleveraged? What does that look like? What does that pay down look like? And that's mm -hmm. what those conversations are about. Now, my business, we're specifically niche. Now, have I helped people over all spectrums? Yeah. And sometimes I do take on special cases, meaning I typically only cater to real estate and business funding and helping other credit repair companies. But if I met someone, they were just like, please, absolutely help me. <laughs> please, Coming to you. West, <laughs> and I couldn't find somebody to help me get a new car yeah. or help me get new eyelashes for production or something like that. I really, truly may make concessions for that person. But all seriousness, the reason for the house, like when I, what got me into that real estate space or helping people become first time homeowners, because it's important. I'm mm -hmm. not here to pick what's better to rent or to own. That's totally up to the person. But if I encounter somebody who's tired of renting and they want to own, and there's something like a credit blemish or a few things that could be cleaned up to help them better qualify for a house, a mortgage, and to stay in it, that's fine. I always have this running joke. Anybody can get whatever they want, but the reality is, can you maintain it? So it more started off with my learning and how I was groomed into the credit space. It was more like a, a halfway house, get people in, get people out. Then I started to say, wait a minute, this is great. The money's great to get people in, to get people out. But I started seeing the same people circle back around after mm -hmm. a few months because we gave them a loaded gun or we gave them a vehicle without a license or a permit. So they have the new credit and they have the new resources, but they go and they mess it up. Not that they're bad people. It's just that they did not have the tools. I really do feel... It, it, it is a mindset, but it's almost, you have to reprogram your habits, like how you, how you do everything with your credit. Like if this, as an example, you know, we talked about that earlier person that may like to use credit cards mm -hmm. because they're trying to rack up the points or whatever they're trying to do. Yeah. Habits. How do we change habits like credit habits? Okay. Well, I don't think getting the points is a bad thing. Like right now I have enough flyer miles. I can go anywhere I want for the rest of the year. So oh, wow. points aren't necessarily bad. And it's not even that I, I don't even like to use the word good or bad. Yeah. But what I like to say is that if you're unaware of how to manage it, it gets unmanageable. It's like a necklace for women watching and men. I hope you understand too, but it's like, <laughs> <laughs> that necklace that tangles up and then yeah. you have to rip it or just throw the necklace away because it got so tangled up. So the key thing is truly identifying your credit limit, how much income you have, what your currently expenses that you're expected to pay and see what wiggle room you have in the middle. If your wiggle room is thin, then your credit utilization should be thin, meaning you shouldn't be using more or biting off more than you can chew. Now, understand that mm -hmm. I'm sure in Canada, too, it's a consumer society and people want and want and they think that miraculously the money is going to pop up or not to even harp on just consumers. There's people who are business professionals and say, hey, I'm going to take a risk on myself. I'm going to order 70 units from China versus the normal 10 that I utilize. Right. And then if no sales come in, then you're still struggling to make those payments. So the, I, I rather someone say, okay, great. We the great. I'm happy you bought all this stuff. We do have a back order. We can take pre-sales and then they can leverage that money that they receive from clients and go buy the other supplies from China and then get it sent back to do their business because this climate is just so funny. I'll be mm -hmm. so transparent. I'm used to sometimes making a buku of money per month, but I have to realize that when people the economy is different and the economy slows down. That means that my brokers who refer clients slow down. That means that people are not truly as interested in getting their credit cleaned up. I'm not sure why, but does if it comes down to toilet paper and food, I'm sure you're going to pick that over your credit that may take a while. 
So mm-hmm. when those slow down or when those seasons slow down, being mentally and financially prepared to be able to say, okay, there's a shortage that possibly have. And of course, we're not speaking lack because God can do all things and does all things. But if we're using just our brains, yeah. you're seeing that if, this, if December is a slower time for me, why would I amp up my spending knowing that it can be a slower time for me? Really, it's really about the strategic understanding your calendar year, understanding the environmental factors that are impacting your business is what I'm hearing. And being able to have that conversation with self or with a professional like yourself, Marcel, to say, hey, this is kind of what you need to look at and, and be more aware of those spending habits. Way back when I had an electrical contracting company and it was interesting because when you're in business, there are so many startup fees or so many things. Are there any, I guess, guidance, wisdom, you know, unique challenges, I guess, that individuals may face that you could help kind of awaken, like um, help people understand like, hey, if you're starting out your business, Here's some warning signs that you need to start to kind of look at your credit, yes. um, any barriers, like before it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and now you have all these, as you say, the blemishes on your report. Yeah. I think the first thing to do, I mean, excited, identify your business, but you definitely want to take a look at your credit, but also equally important, you want to take a look at bank accounts, meaning previous. Sometimes we're in our 30s and 40s and we had a bank account in our 20s that we totally let go. We totally didn't pay them back. There were different things. And it may not show on our credit report, but there is a check system. I always have this joke. I'm a jokester. This says <laughs> the banks, it. they have a group chat about you. So they know, they talk about you. They know, you. They know your backstory. Agree. <laughs> they talk about you. They'll say, you know that Sharon, no offense to any Sharons in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Sharon applied for a loan over here at JP Morgan Chase today, and she blew off Bank of America. She blew off TD Bank. She blew off Canada Finance. I'm just making that pay yeah. up. But she yeah. blew those banks off, and it's just like she expects us to prove her, provide her with a loan. So truly being able to take a look at your credit report and not frowning about it, because the reality is when you look at it, you can fix it. It's better to look at it and fix it or look at it and have an explanation. Imagine going to the bank and you don't realize and you're sitting there and you're so excited or gung-ho. <laughs> Your face because like, you see this no. score that looks cute, this score that looks attractive, and you think that that score is great. And you get there and the broker's like, oh, you were denied because, you know, in 1999, you did this. And in 2001, you did this. In 2002, mm-hmm. there's a record. Now, I'm not opposed to helping people get things cleaned off. I will absolutely clean up. You could have a bankruptcy. You could have didn't pay Tom, Dick, Harry, Kevin, Marshall, whomever. (laughs) And we can still get you out of that. But I still want to provide the mindset that, guess what? You can't go back to that. You just Mm -hmm. cannot go back. And especially as we go into an AI society, you can apply for a credit card and you're applying. They go, they take a screenshot of you applying. So even if a credit repair company wanted to help you, they'll say, oh, certainly, Sharon, this is your account because here's you in your bathrobe and your rollers applying Thursday at 12 o'clock in the morning. They will be able to see it. So that's why we want to get our mindsets in tune now, because when AI changes, those blemishes or those late payments that we used to can get somebody on the phone with and relate with them. Yeah, it's going to soon be gone. Is there a time where we can do that now? Yes, I do help people get late payments off. And I am strategic about that. And I do get on the phone and speak on the behalf of my client with my client on the phone. But guess what? I have to prepare that two, three to five years. That won't be the case. There'll be nothing that I can say unless we have physical proof like this is late because you guys. But other than that, they're going to say, Hmm. We just have to report what we we have. We have to tell the bureaus what we have. Wow. So, so question I have is for that that leader who's wanting to build their business or someone who wants to to purchase whatever it is. Sure. How do you know if you have blemishes or not? Like, is there a way? Because again, this is a myth buster. I want to sure. myth bust for a minute. Sure. If you go and check 
something goes to the credit. Like yeah. every time someone looks at your credit, does it give you like a deduction or how does that work? Okay. So we're talking, you talk about two things. So you're talking okay. about a credit inquiry. Yes. Anytime okay. you apply for credit and you're saying, hi, I would like to be approved for X, Y, and Z, whether it's approved or denied, you get a credit inquiry. So you'll get a mark that's pretty much a mark with the company's name and the date. Got I've it. worked with people who had 800 scores, 815 credit, 850 is the best in the U.S. Okay, yep. 800, so they're very top tier. They're considered exceptional credit, and they still were de denied. Um, they still were denied franchise loans for having too many inquiries. Inquiries make you okay. seem desperate. So when you do apply for stuff, you should apply for things strategic. I don't want to be one of those people that say, hey, you always have to seek an expert because that's not the case for everything. But I think in this situation, you should. Even if you know how to change your oil, sometimes you just want somebody to get under there and get greasy and dirty. I <laughs> do it for you. You don't have the time and you can't hold the YouTube yeah. and then still change your oil. So yeah. just having that consultation and having somebody look at and say, hey, Bridget, you may not have seen it this way, but lenders look at it this way. We always hear people talk about credit, but we never hear what lenders want. You know, we never hear that. It's true. That's, so, that's a good That's a good point. What do lenders look for? Lenders are always looking for, especially post-COVID, they're looking for people, one, that they have relationships with, meaning your direct deposit comes here. I've been banking with you since 2016, and we have a good relationship. I know you, so I know your patterns and your habits, so right. I can gauge if you're going to pay back or not. So that's when they're looking for somebody with a solid history. But more importantly, they're not looking for somebody who has a lot of late payments. Late payments are sometimes, not even sometimes, I'll just say it flat out. Late payments on open accounts are worse than collections because at least okay. collections and charge-offs, you can fight them to the T. And a lot of times you can hang up, you can get the collection agency hung up on technicalities right. with the law because a lot of times they're never following the law. So that's how you would in favor. But with late payment, especially if you have multiple, what would be the lender's incentive to remove that late payment for you when you didn't have enough respect to even pay them on time? Not once, multiple. Now, of course, right. if there's one time, we'll get on that phone, we'll get it done. Sometimes if there's two or three, by the grace of God, I've been able to work my magic. <laughs> However, when we get into six or seven or eight, nine, 10 late payments, how could you really, you, you, there's nothing you can really say. Like it can't be the computer's issue that many times. So um, a question in this again, just th thank you so much for your expert knowledge. This mm -hmm. is really, really helpful. And, and for the audience, cause there's always questions and some of them are, are really basic questions, but they're sure. good to be asked. Um, particularly when we're talking about credit and improving, you know, our confidence plus our credit worthiness, yes. how long does it normally take? And again, I know everyone's unique. People mm -hmm. are, different their stories are different sure how long does it normally take say if someone's at uh i don't know let's say a four or five hundred level okay. to go to a 800 like how long would that take for someone what kind of process would you go through how it would you varies but i can speak yeah. to different pinpoints because there isn't there's no such thing as a set answer for that because it depends if yeah. somebody was at a 400 because they had technically let's say a bankruptcy and they were able to negotiate chapter 13 chapter 7 they were able to negotiate and work out to pay things back. And yep. then as we started taking those accounts off of their credit report and they were able to establish new credit, then eventually it would build. I think that 800 is such a common number that people love and want to hear, but I, I don't want to say it's unrealistic because that's a lie, but it's just, it takes time and it really takes attention to detail and specific cards to get to 800. Now, mm -hmm. do I see people go from 400 to 700 or 400 to 730, 750 rather quickly? Yes, because what you want to do is take off negative items and start adding new stuff. And that's where that mindset coaching comes in, because mm -hmm. you would think if I take things off, my score is supposed to jump but your score is based off the items that you're using. So if you have no credit that you're using, then your scores can't jump. So we have ah, to take the negative okay. stuff off. Like literally, I always tell people, we have to shed the fat and build the muscle. <laughs> So Shed just, the fat and build the muscle. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. So, so yes. can we dig into that a little bit and, and thanks cool. for, for making this really simple. I always appreciate your, your great ability to make it simple for, for those who are like, Oh, what does this mean? Sure. So 
would that be like using different credit cards for different things? Like what, what is that? It can be a variety of things. I also like, because most people always talk about credit cards, but I'm also a big fan of installment loans. I think mortgages are great to have on your credit profile. I think that cars are great to have on your, if you can afford them, they're good to have on your credit profile because they're also show that you make set payments consistent. Your credit cards can go up and down, meaning how many, how much you use. So one month your payment may be 500, but one month it just may be $115 depending on how much you use during that time. But your mortgage and your car or a loan is usually a set price every month. And it shows how consistent you are with meeting that. So mm-hmm. I'm a big fan for having a mixed. I love to have a mixed profile and a mixed profile means revolving in installment. Revolving are your set loan set price and revolving yep. means it will just revolve. Your price will revolve up and down each month, depending on how much credit you're using. All these basic questions, but they're always good to ask an yeah. expert. <laughs> uh, you know, it was, it was interesting. And again, I kind of flash back to, to, you know, having conversations with my, my adults in my okay. world, my kids. Okay. And it's, it's interesting because, because for many of them, they'll keep their credit amount low, mm-hmm. like under a thousand or five thousand. What is the key to really ensuring that you have the good credit score with that? Is it to keep it and paid off, as you said earlier, a hundred percent, or is there a threshold that they need to be under? Let's say they have a couple months and things slow down and they can't pay it back. What what are some strategies that you suggest that are great? That's a great question. And you know what? No one has ever asked me that, which is really the, I always say credit cards are like, you know, high school popularity. Some cards are really popular with the banks and they're like, oh, wow. And some cards are really cheesy and you only got them by the skin of your teeth and you only got them because they wanted to collect your interest. So if we're working with high level banks and that can be PNC, TD Bank, Bank of America, or just popular banks. And of course, if anybody has questions, I'll be more than happy to let them know if their particular banks are in the popular crew or not. Mm -hmm. Usually popular banks, you get more when you pay it off immediately because they're challenged. They're like, oh, we know that this person's a consumer and we're going to get them to kind of break in. We're going to get them to a point to where they keep paying so much that we're going to offer them a limit that they can't say no to. And then they're going to do that big max project. And then we got them with the interest. Mm-hmm. So there's different mm-hmm. strategies. So once you pay that off every month, they're going to feel challenged and they're going to be like, yes, let's give him or let's give her more. Now, when it comes to those store cards, Hey, you get 10% off. If you buy these sandals today, which is like the worst. worst. (laughs) And believe it or not, in the group chat, banks talk about us like dogs when they see us with the store cards. Because they're thinking when they see store cards, and I get it, and I'm not judging people who have store cards at all. Because when I started off, I still have some store cards that I hung on to. Because when you get to a point when you had cards for years, to shut them down and close them would just lower your credit anyway. So there's no point to do it. That's an important point. Yes. What you were saying is if you already have them and you haven't closed them out, don't close then them. don't close them. Don't close them. Not so either. what happens when you close it then? Well, when you close it, it does. Let's say, for example, if you had a card and you had it since 1999 or you had it since 2000 and it's already four years of history on it, when you knock it down, a per- large percentage of your score is credit history. So when you shut it down, you've just deducted that credit history so your score drops. Now it's interesting. I didn't, I I did not know that because I don't have store cards. So that's interesting. (laughs) Yeah. But it's also, it's also strategic too. It's also individual strategic. For example, I help a lot of people with franchises as far as getting funding. So if I had someone who had, let's just say maybe a 15,000 JP Morgan chase or even an $8,000 discover and a 4,000 capital one, and they've had these cards for let's say six or seven years. And then they may have a credit one bank card. That's like 1100 credit. One banks are one of those banks that other banks, they turn their nose up at. It's just like Mm. who invited her, you know? (laughs) So with that being said, depending on how long the person had that credit one bank card, I may say, hey, let's just take this off so the lenders don't think that you were in a point in your life when you were dumpster diving and they always see you as this elite person who always had a significant history. Yes, your scores may drop a little bit, but we can go to Discover or we can go to Capital One that you've been paying on time and ask them for a credit limit increase that will 
take over the price or the credit limit that you have for that credit one bank card. So okay. everything is strategic. There's no one size fit all. That's really interesting. And I had never really reflected on that. Um, Cause I, you know, for me personally, I just keep to the bigger banks here. Like sure. we have like, sure. you know, that that's kind of where, but it's interesting because everyone's journey could be completely different. Yeah. So yeah. this is really important. So I want to kind of come back and this is so informative. Like yeah, I can't believe we're already like it. half an hour we're already. I'm like, what? It. <laughs> um, it's interesting. So if, again, I just want to do a bit of a, sure for those maybe females who are interested in this credit world and, okay. and kind of getting themselves into it because it's all about heart and it's about the leadership heart and yes. and leading self and you're a female in this what i believe and understand to be a male dominated profession what would you do with all your knowledge you have now mm -hmm. and you were going to suggest and give some advice wisdom that you have to that new up and coming woman who's yeah. coming in and says i really like credit i really like this space what kind of wisdom what kind of ideas should they look at what could they mm -hmm. do what are some strategies that you would suggest for them sure. to be successful the first thing I would do is say, look at your credit report and seek to understand it. Seek mm -hmm. to truly understand it. And once you get an understanding of it that you think that you know, mm -hmm. then I would say you could, it's so funny because sometimes I can say you can look at some people on YouTube, but I really think that YouTube truly shows you what not to do sometimes. So <laughs> if true. I had to start over, I would say definitely look at your credit profile and look for more credit bureau information about what this means and how it weighs on your credit profile. And if that doesn't make sense, let me know. I can definitely break that into digestible pieces because it felt heavy. But you would want to look at your file, how the credit bureaus look at your file or how the lenders you're interested in working with, mm -hmm. how they look at your file. And even if that's having a conversation with people at your local banks, most banks have relationship managers. Yep. So you can build a relationship with them because they have the time to do the chitty chat where the underwriter is like, yes or no, you know, <laughs> exactly. So Pass you, fail. Nope. <laughs> utilize the relationship manager to say, Hey, look, my credit is X, Y, and Z. I got this going on. Ideally, what does it look like to get approved for a personal credit card, an auto loan, a mortgage and stuff with you? And a lot of times they'll bring back those numbers. They'll say, oh, sure, Sharon. Sharon, if you're in the chat, <laughs> you I didn't mean to do it. But it's like, sure, Sharon, we like most of our people to have around a 670. We like them to have at least two or three years of credit history with the credit card, $5,000 or more. Of course, no late payments, no charge-offs, no collections at all, but no yeah. late payments within the past seven years. And you're like, oh, okay, I have these things. So now I can learn or figure out how to clean those things up. And sometimes, mm -hmm. like I, I'm not sure if I told you this, but what I typically do too, if there's ever a file that I have some questions about, because the bureaus, they do, sometimes they change their minds and one time this is going flowing and this changes. So I will literally go on Upwork or I'll go on LinkedIn and I'll find someone who works for the bureau and I'll offer to pay them for a consultation and say, hey, I noticed that some of these changes are going on. I'm not asking for your secret sauce, but I'm still want to kind of know the ingredients and no. I'll put my own measurements together to be able to get my client to the finish line. So to Smart. not go off on a tangent, because sometimes I can... <laughs> <laughs> the key would be being able to make sure that you understand your credit profile, you know it, and you sought out people who would be judging your credit profile. And why do I prefer that over YouTube and over Instagram and stuff like that? Is because a lot of times people are saying things that are cool, cute, and cozy, and they're saying things that they downloaded from ChatGPT. Mm. And I really just felt convicted. So that means that I have to take some time to start really creating some content that can be able to give people some recommendations and hope and different things like that and some results. But a lot of times the credit industry has been so salacious. Anytime somebody tells you that you can have $100,000 with no effort or no anything, they're lying to you. And yeah. most people believe it and get wrapped into it. But as a new professional or a new person who wants to get into credit, after I understand my stuff, then I would take a look at a family member. Then I would take a look at a friend. And if I had no family members or friends, that's when I would go to the internet and say, hey, 
I'm interested in learning credit. I've made these relationships. Here's what I've done for myself. If there's anybody interested in me doing their profile for free, I'm working on two or three people. Just DM me or just message me and we can work on X, Y, and Z. And oh, this is so good. Yeah. I, so much knowledge, you have so much wisdom, and you have all really truly demonstrated how to do this well. Yeah. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much. There's just so much more I could ask. And <laughs> this whole space, especially for you know individuals who are wanting to go and start franchises and, yeah. and getting money, it's a whole endeavor. It's it it's is. not, you need to take the time, you need to look at yourself first yeah. to really know know what are your patterns what is your credit history what is your kind of credit rating yeah. um are there any tools i know that you're going to be having a new website coming out soon yes, I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> so that will be really great so people can kind of get to know you even more i know you're on social so how do people get a hold of you i always tell people i'm young but i'm old in spirit like <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a 70 year old woman in a 40 something year old body. okay so I'm all, email always works the most yeah. efficient because I'm usually not usually I'm always on top of email and I know that I need to get better with social media but I really am doing the work in real life not saying that yeah. people who post on social media aren't doing the work in real life but I'm still trying to figure out how to do the work in real life and still be engaging on social media and you know and that may just come with hiring somebody to take me out into the new year in the future by highlighting the stuff that I do because we do do awesome stuff and it should be highlighted but I find my time to be more engulfed in the actual physical work than the, look at me, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting the work done, Marshall. That's what yeah. I really appreciate so about email, all you're doing. And yeah, my please. email is Marshall at superstar inquiry services.com. So it's the same name, just Marshall and take off the of inside the header. And so it's Marshall at superstar inquiry services.com. And I'll be more than happy to free take a look at your credit report and have a conversation with you about ideal suggestions and next steps custom to what you're trying to do. And one thing I'll say before I let you ask her questions, even if you your, your spouse, your husband, wife, whomever, you know, whatever you prefer, that's your business. So with that being said, a lot of times you guys have a similar report, but if you have two different goals, you don't need to clean them up the same. If I had a wife that wanted a business, but a husband that wanted a car, we would look at their files entirely different. And one jewel I will leave with, because I find this to be important. If you are married or you, you are married, a lot of times people always want to do joint accounts. I'm not opposed to joint accounts for a mortgage, but when it comes to things like cars or credit cards and stuff, I'm not a big fan of a joint account because life happens. There were people who had so much money two years ago, and now they may be struggling a little bit. But if your husband is late on that card, now you are too. So now right. you both got shot with the stab wound. But if your husband was on it by himself, his stuff could have been late, and then you could have been working toward building your up so you guys can leverage your credit. And then once he gets his fix, he can come back to the table. But if you both are injured, then how does the house survive? So sometimes joint is just not the best. It's just not the best. It's not mortgages. I understand. Definitely do what you yeah. need to do because that's yeah. a lot of times a large purchase and you guys just work together to keep that on time and keep that paid. But if it's a car or something that you know that you can handle by yourself, please handle it by yourself and get it paid on time because God forbid you don't know. You don't know one day you can wake up and just be completely sick. And if you're joint and it's all on this side, then you guys are both stuck where we can hurry up and say, we can say, hey, this sickness looks like it's coming this way. Can we hurry up and secure something on my wife's side before right. things take a turn versus having both of you guys stuck and destitute or with the a flat tire on the side of the road. Wherever, wherever you are, it doesn't matter if you're in the U.S. or not. Those are, I think, really important points for all of us to yeah. increase our, our confidence yes. and understanding our cre credit worthiness. Yes. I just really appreciate this time. It's gone so fast. This is why oh, I'm no. like, there's so much more. Oh my gosh. Oh my <laughs> but gosh. We'll have to have you back again. Sure. And yeah, thank you so much. And I know one of your, someone commented on LinkedIn and how much, you know, your wonderful services have meant and, and the great services that you provide. So um, I'm excited. I'm thrilled that you came to the Leadership Heart Podcast. 
podcast because you, yes. what we started with was that you are very much community, it's family, it's really doing more than just in and out kind of service. There's so much richness. Oh, so your closing remarks, I'm going to turn it over to you. What would yes. you like to say to the audience? Yes. My closing remarks is that we're not a quick fix. It's not a come get a haircut in a poof up and go. It's, uh, you know, we definitely work at our fastest. We're not trying to keep you here forever. So it's not like, Hey, we want to just keep you here and just drag your time out. We understand that your goal is to obtain a house and your goal is to get funding. And a lot of times those are on contracts and deadlines, but we'll work to the best of our ability, but we're absolutely not a quick fix, but we are a comforting hand, hug, hold, whatever. We're a comforting support that can be able to get you through it honestly. And if you are someone that's interested in the house will even take the time to have the conversation with your realtor because a lot of times realtors don't understand fully about credit. They're just telling you to pay certain stuff or do this or do that. And sometimes even though you pay that collection or pay that negative item to have your house, you're still kind of stuck because even when you go for furniture or other things for your house, that late payment is on there and it says that you paid. That means that you committed to that late payment. So I would love to work with your realtor if you're interested in working with me or getting to know more about me. And for those who are on the business side, I'm here for you as well, too. Let's take a look at and let's make sure we make sense, because sometimes in the franchise space, the franchisees, sometimes they're rushing you because they want to get you in that space so quickly. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying that we can't rush, but let's take a look at how we can truly strengthen your credit, because sometimes the faster you rush, the higher your interest rate's going to be and the lower your loan's going to be. So sometimes mm -hmm. waiting a month is better than waiting two weeks. So, and we'll talk wow. you through that process. I, I love that. And, and I like how you are supporting, you do your strategic sessions with individuals mm -hmm. for whatever, you know, goals they have at, at hand. So mm -hmm. thank you so much, Marcel. I look forward to your new website coming out and yes. I look forward to hearing all the success stories that you have. I know you have tons of testimonials of people that you have truly helped around the globe. I mean, this is the beautiful thing about this space. Yes. We don't have to have person to person, you are truly a global mindset, credit yeah. mindset coach, which Absolutely. I think is so important. So Absolutely. thank you so much. Thank I'm you. going thank to um, put on the, the last little outro okay. and remind everyone that the Leadership Heart podcast will be coming live and we have some more future guests that are going to be coming up. Always remind yourself, show up for yourself and connect to your heart, to your mind, to that higher calling and consciousness, as we always say, because we have the opportunity today to inspire, to truly live everything and all things in our in our best way, our best possible um, opportunities are here right now. And we've learned from Marshall today that don't let credit stop you. Yeah. You can, there's new solutions, there's new opportunities with confidence, you can increase your credit worthiness. So I thank you so much. And thank I'm you. going to send us out and I'll meet you on the other side after. Yay.